You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. We're talking about dental implants today. With us, we have Dr. Peter Thompson. Dr. Thompson, welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Randy. How are you doing? Good, good. Now, I know you brought a lot of photos, so we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. I do. Now, for people that don't know your practice, like who's the typical dental implant patient? Oh, man, what a question, Randy. Typical patients vary from day to day, and, okay. and we see everybody. Um, sometimes we see young people uh, that are having a lot of serious dental problems. Sometimes we see older people that have um, a lifetime and a life history of, of constant frustration and and you know they're just they just want solutions and they want answers and so it is not uncommon for us uh, in a typical day to work on someone that's in their 20s and then of course someone that's in their 70s or 80s uh, a lot of what we see because we are a sedation practice uh, and I built uh, our practice around uh, being able to, to take care of people that have a lot of high fear okay um, a lot of anxiety um, typically, those types of people don't seek my treatment. Uh, they do everything they can to stay away from me. For So if I can get them in the door and get them comfortable and allow them to uh, tackle several years worth of dental problems in one visit, I consider that to be a success. So back to your original question about who's the typical dental implant patient. We don't really um, have a typical category, but what I see is a couple different groups. Uh, first and foremost, we see people that um, are having years of problems, think they might be heading toward, toward a denture. They have literally uh, given up on their mouth. And uh, we'll see um, other people that might be missing a, a, a single tooth or two uh, and just need a, need a, a simple replacement. Um, interestingly enough, when you, when you look at the people that probably need our services the most, uh, they're the ones that aren't searching this out. And, uh, that typical patient is a denture wearer, okay? Someone that's had a denture for many years and they're not, they're not searching us out. Well, why? Yeah. Uh, well, because they are out of the loop. They no longer go to the dentist. Uh, and frankly, you, you can't hardly blame them. Most of them ended up in a denture because they were so frustrated after 20, 30 years, thousands and thousands of dollars that they're just pouring into their mouth. Uh, they'd have a root canal, they'd have gum disease, they had bad breath, they'd break a tooth, they'd lose a tooth, um, get to the point where they needed bridge work, maybe they had their mouth rehabilitated, uh, but ultimately get to the point where the only logical solution for them is to remove their teeth. And, and get a denture. And get a denture, right. And so when they get that denture, oh man, they're so relieved, they don't have these problems anymore, so they stay away from the dentist. Okay? So it's hard to get them in. It's hard to get them in because they're, they're not used to going. You know, typically this, the, the second type of patient that we're gonna see uh, is gonna be someone that has a lot of fear or a lot of anxiety. They don't like the sights, the smells, sounds, or the smells, so they stay away. We also get a lot of people that um, are kind of afraid of, of the unknown. You know, they, they don't understand the whole process that's going on in their mouth. They're sick and tired of all the, the, the pain and the decay. Um, but they are kind of overwhelmed by the situation and don't understand how easy and simple it is to, to fix some of these solutions. Um, okay. Many people also, interestingly enough, many people self-diagnose. Okay. What so, do you mean? Well, what I mean by that is so-and-so will say, well, my, my original dentist many years ago said I don't have enough bone for, for implants. Um, and my response to them is, you know what, maybe for that particular dentist that was accurate, but things have really changed. Our, our, our scanning technology has changed. Our techniques have changed. And it's rare, very rare, that I don't see a patient that we can't do some significant uh, improvements. But isn't it true, though, that if you've been wearing a denture like 20 years, you don't have enough bone to, to get dental implants? Not true at all. OK. Yeah, well, let me tell you, uh, just the other day, um, a lady came in to, t to see me. And she has been in a denture uh, for about eight years, okay. uh, frustrated. The thing that, sh that sh she was trying to get across to me um, was that it has completely changed her life. Uh, it, she was outgoing. She was smiling. She would interact in the community. She was very uh, involved in philanthropic uh, endeavors. Uh, and after she had her denture, she was so ashamed of the way it looked that 
she became very withdrawn. Is and this what she tells you on the consult? No, oh, she was in tears. Okay. She was wow. in tears. And and as as we're talking about what her what the particular options are for her, um, you know, she said, Well my dentist told me I didn't have enough bone and I already looked at her C T and I said, Well the good news is you've got you got awesome bone, you've got great bone. Uh, and so when people self-diagnose, they say, okay, I'm, I'm, I've got diabetes, I can't do this. I've got periodontal disease, I can't do this. I've got poor bone, I can't do this. I will tell you, it is very, very rare when we'll see someone that I can't do this on, this, okay. this particular type of procedure. So this woman that I'm telling you about, um, she decided to move forward with fixed teeth, teeth that she didn't have to take in and out. When we handed her the mirror, the day that we were finally inserting them, um, she held the mirror in front of her face and it kind of made me a little nervous because I thought she was a little upset. Okay. And she literally started to cry. Uh, really? And that to me is a complete reinforcement of why I do this, Randy. I love that part of my, my job. I love that, that ability that we have uh, as a restorative dentist to be able to change someone's life. She now, every time she comes in, and I've got a picture of her, I'll show it to her. <laughs> okay. um, every time she comes in, she is dressed up, she's wearing makeup, she's outgoing. Her husband, that day that we were, um, that we were going through all this, he was really concerned about her. Okay. And he said, she is a completely different woman. She, now she's just talky-talky and gets out and, and, and wants to be involved in everything. When she goes to eat, one of the things she told me, she said, um, for years, I could not eat what I wanted to. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we forget how, how nice it is to have teeth that can actually break things down. So they can eat whatever they want. Like when they get new teeth supported by dental implants, I mean, they could eat, or do they have to be careful with certain things like corn on the cob or oh, biting a, a carrot with their absolutely front teeth? Absolutely not. When you, when you get these fixed teeth, they are a new set of teeth. You can eat anything you want, corn on the cob, ribs, you can chew lettuce, you can bite into a carrot, you can bite into an apple. You're able, because the front teeth are to bite through something, the back teeth are to crush it. And to be able to have that ability All right. uh, with, this, with this fixed teeth, it, it, it's life changing. In New Mexico, right, are there a lot of people wearing dentures? Like an upper <laughs> lower denture? Oh, what a, uh, in New Mexico, in the area that, in Eastern New Mexico and West Texas, I would say everybody's familiar with uh, Jerry Jones' monstrosity, the AT&T Center, okay, the Cowboys, okay. Cowboys Stadium. Right. I say there's easily two or three times the people to fill that stadium, just in our area, that are headed to a denture. The people that wear a denture, probably at least once we could fill it. Uh, so it's a big problem. It's a huge problem. And, and unfortunately, these people, you've, you've really got a feel for them because they walk through life and you, you might think, oh, this guy's just grumpy, or maybe she's hormonal or something, but the reality is um, their, their self-confidence is so affected that they don't want to smile. They don't want to interact with people, so they end up being a little introverted. We love them. Okay. We love those people because those are the ones that we can really make a difference in their How lives. How old can you be to do this? As like, old? what's your oldest patient? Uh, my oldest patient was in her 90s. And really? Absolutely. That you gave new teeth to, supported by implants? Yeah, absolutely. Why would a 90 year old want to do this? Why wouldn't she? Okay. I think everybody would like to have a smile like you, Randy. I'm honest. Okay. 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 You've got a very nice smile. Thanks. Uh, when, you, when you're dealing with people that they're, they're at that point in life, a lot of times they just say, you know, and honestly, we'll see two, two ends of the spectrum. We'll see one end of the spectrum with someone that's in their 50s. They'll say, oh, I can't just, I just can't see doing this at my age. And I just want to say to them, you know what? Don't put the bullet in the gun just yet. And then we have another woman in her 90s that decided that she was sick and tired of not being able to enjoy her food. Her day revolved around her meals. She would I wake guess if up, you're 90, that's what it's about. It, 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 and socially, you know, that's what she wants to do. She wanted to meet so-and-so for breakfast. She was gonna go meet her daughter for lunch. Um, you know, and, and she wants to be able to eat. She wants to be able to take care of herself. And if you can't properly chew your food, you're gonna have all sorts of problems. You're gonna have digestive problems. So what did you do for the 90 year old? Uh, we did a, a high bridge on the bottom, which is the fixed teeth on the bottom. And we okay. made her conventional denture on the top. Okay, so she can eat whatever she wants. Whatever she wants. So when a 90 year old could do it, so 80s young, 70s young Very to do young. this. Very young, and it, it's, it's not about your age. It's about 
your desire to be able to improve your life and your quality. Okay, of good. Life. Now you brought some photos. What are we looking at? I here? did. These are the implant patients. These are these are uh, yes uh, a, a small sampling of um, the people that we've affected over the years. As, as I was telling you earlier, Buddy uh, came to us after he had actually had some implants done on the top, um, had destroyed his teeth. Okay, so missing teeth, uh, periodontal disease, broken teeth, lots of decay. Um, and frustrating because he, his, his top uh, fixed denture was breaking all the time. Okay. Okay. So what he wanted was he wanted to be able to restore his mouth and not have to worry about taking something in and out. Uh, so we put him in a top and a bottom hybrid. Okay. When he first came. What does to, that mean? I'm sorry. Uh, a top and a bottom fixed teeth. Sometimes okay. I get into my dental mode and I all forget right, what I'm all doing. Right. Okay. So. Um, when Buddy first came to us, uh, he was overweight, he was on oxygen, he smoked, um, had, a, had some other issues going on, okay? Um, but when he decided that he was gonna move forward and do this, he uh, quit smoking, got off the oxygen, lost a lot of weight, and look at the difference now. I want you to see the difference in this man's face. Nice. Look at where he was before, look at where he is now, okay? So a lot of what we do is, so those new teeth don't come in or out? Those are screwed into place. So he would have had a denture, possibly, if he didn't go to you? Right. Okay. Right. Uh, and Or just, you know, worn his teeth down to the gums. We see that too. People just, they don't think it's, a, it's available. They don't think that there's any way that they can fix that mouth. So the beauty of this type of procedure is there is so much artistry involved in this. Uh, we can control every little aspect of his of his mouth. Uh, if you you'll see a lot of times that their their mouth is real narrow, by broadening it, it brightens up their face. Julia Roberts, beautiful smile, okay. long teeth, horsey teeth almost. If I were to put those on you or me, we would look crazy. But on her, it fits. It fits. Yeah. Every single person is different. He was different. His teeth were so short initially, you could barely see him. He was really smiling in that picture. Okay. Um, and this is more of a relaxed smile, and we, we are able to lengthen his teeth enough that they look nice. Now you also notice that they follow his smile, his, his lip line. Here's another. Here's another. This picture I love. Let's okay? take a look. Uh, Savannah. Okay. Just look at. Jeez. Those That's got to be unusual, by the way, for teeth to be like that. Not at all. Not at all, and that's that's the funny thing. Everybody, if I've heard this once, I've heard it a thousand times. I'm so ashamed of my mouth. I can't believe I've done this to myself. And I literally, I'm like, ma'am, if you realize what my typical day was, I see this nonstop. I see this day in and day out. So it's not like uh, you're very unusual to have these problems. We just don't see it because they don't smile? They, they don't, they so don't smile and they don't, and they don't interact. They maybe they maybe they're a little bit more secluded, but this is look at her look at her eyes look how yeah um, I mean she just she looks tired she looks worn out her teeth okay very typical um, several different uh, missing teeth broken teeth some gum disease you know as she comes in right there smile we tell her to smile and it's a grimace and, yeah. and that's that's her smile that's her smile okay. Um, and, and her bite, very worn down, okay? So when the chin and the nose start getting closer and closer, you just look older, right? So realistically, her only option at this point, she thinks, is a denture, okay? okay? All right. And when we're able to, to talk about the different options that we have available, whether it's a snap-in, snap-out denture or teeth that are fixed in place that don't come in and out. Um, so what'd she get? she got a combination again. Okay. Okay. Um, but look at this. Wow. I mean, do you even recognize that, that woman? Yeah, it's a different look for no, sure. No, it's, it's completely a different look. She's so much more relaxed. Uh, it, she interacts more. She's outgoing more. Uh, she shows up again. She's smiling. She's talking with everybody. I love seeing her because she brightens the, 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 the practice when she comes in. Okay. Yeah. She actually um, made a commercial for us. And, and it is so powerful, again, when I, when I see that, and when I see them saying these things, it reinforces why I do what I do. So what do they like more? Do they like the way it looks or the fact that they can eat whatever they want? It's interesting, because you get a little bit of both. Uh, she loved the way they looked. Okay. But after a few visits, we've talked to her a little bit, we've made sure everything is working just right. She's like, I'm, I'm amazed. In her testimonial, she talks about uh, I can eat anything I want. I can chew anything I want. I can have corn on the cob. I can have ribs. That's awesome. 
that has changed her life. Okay, this gentleman right and here. And she would have ended up in dentures. She would have ended up in dentures. That was her. That was her only option: either a denture, a snap in, snap out, or something that's completely fixed in place. Okay. Okay. Now, at the top of the show, we said no more dentures. So you don't like dentures. Do you think that's the future? Where in the future, maybe traditional dentures that just rest on nothing, that aren't attached to anything. Do you think that'll be eliminated? Whether it's a hundred years from now or whatever, where everything will be attached. To I would implants? hope so, Randy. I would hope so, but I think there will always be a need for just a plain denture. Okay. But I think ultimately, um, you'll want something that's doesn't move and that you can snap either snap in and out or something that is screwed in and it, it completely changes okay. the way you feel. Okay. So here's one right. that didn't care about uh, the appearance so much. Okay. okay? Um, oil field worker. Um, guy loves golf, interacts a lot with people on the golf course, but really doesn't, uh, re really wasn't concerned with the way his teeth looked. He was more concerned about the fact that he couldn't eat, he couldn't chew. So with Gary, um, we were not able to save his teeth, unfortunately, okay? So his, his options were either a denture, something that snaps in and out, or something that's fixed, and he went with something that is new teeth, teeth that are you know, in place. After he's had them for a few months, then he comes back and he's like, you know, I am getting so many compliments. <laughs> and, and what they're saying is, they're saying, what'd you do different? Did you shave your beard off? Did you, did you cut your mustache? You know, did you cut your hair? What's, what's different about you? And it's funny that so many people that may not know him maybe very well, they're telling me you have a beautiful smile, but the, the, the people that know him and interact with him. It's a big difference it's with a huge this guy. Difference. Okay, so what I want you to do, Randy, is I want you to look at his before smile. That was a big smile. We ask people, please smile. No and teeth showing. Yeah, well, they, they don't want to smile. They, it's just naturally, they, subconsciously, they don't do it anymore. But look at him now. I mean, look at the difference. <laughs> yeah, he he's, he's trimmed his mustache. Um, he's comfortably showing a nice amount of tooth. And that, again, this is all stuff that we can control. We have the power to be able to make them longer, shorter, or whatever. Is this one of those things where the guy like this will say, I should have done this years ago? All the time. All the time. What I have people tell me was it's the, the best investment I've ever made, and I wish I had done it 20 years ago. So we're going to take a quick break. We come back a little bit more about the process, what to expect on day one. You're watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. I've always had not so good teeth. I didn't smile anymore. People always thought I was sad or not happy or they would try to make me laugh and I would giggle but I never opened my mouth to laugh. It was like okay it's time to do something for myself. They started the IV and the next thing I knew my husband was putting me in the car so <laughs> it was awesome. I would recommend it to anybody. Before my new smile I had difficulty eating anything that was hard or if I had to chew it a whole lot or I was afraid to bite into it but now I eat anything I want to any way I want to and any time I want to I don't have to worry about it. The pain afterwards was minimal. He took very good care of me made sure I had everything I needed. The only regret I have is I didn't do it sooner. You're watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. Uh, with us, we have an expert on the topic. We have Dr. Peter Thompson. Okay, so Dr. Thompson, I know you have some photos and we're very short on time. I'm sorry. Uh, let's get through as many of those as we can. You bet, you bet. Well, let's just... Uh, and these are all dental implant patients. These are all dental implant patients. Okay. So there were people that were headed to dentures. Um, there's, a, there's a perfect example. Young. Of a young lady. Okay, the youngest that I've done is, is tw like 21, 22 years old, and it was because of um, just rampant decay. Okay. And that was not her. Uh, but it, when, when, when they get to that point, they don't have any options. They're headed towards a denture. And so when you give them this ability to be able to have teeth that are still fixed in place on a new lease on life, uh, they're amazed. Look at the smile, okay? Wow, so, so th this woman, you couldn't save the teeth, had to be extracted, right. and she gets this. Right. These look like real teeth. They are real teeth. They function like real teeth. They're her real teeth. Look at the before and after, okay? Now, would you say in that picture, that teeth matter. Yeah, I mean, she definitely looks more attractive, prettier. Much, you know what's funny? Um, Hollywood has kind of, has formed our perspective because if, if you want to cast somebody as looking less intelligent than average or maybe uh, a drug dealer or maybe someone that's a, a ne'er-do-well, uh, 
take out a few of their teeth. You know, cast someone that's missing that's a, a few point. teeth. It is. Uh, if you want to make someone look poor, you give them bad teeth right, in the movies. Right, exactly. And it's not, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's just the reality. Uh, if you have two identical twin sisters and you're interviewing them, one, and one of them sits there and she's kind of like this, and, uh, you know, this is what I like to do on a daily basis, and the other one is, hi, how you doing? Which one are you going to hire? Yeah, the one that looks happy. The one that looks positive. happy, the one that smiles. I mean, that's, that's a reality. That's, that's what... She's got to be thrilled. I mean, that's a big... That's like an extreme makeover. She loves it. She does. Okay, good. Time for a couple more. Okay. Uh, I hate to rush you, but we've got to rush a little bit. I'm sorry. Tamara. All right. Interestingly enough, Tamara, when she first came in... Wow. Uh, typical, again, uh, more advanced gum disease. Uh, her smile, though, if you just looked at it, was actually kind of nice. Uh, you can see the before smile uh, is the one on, the, on, on this one right here, okay? So her options were uh, extractions and dentures because we had lost too much bone for to be able to keep her, her natural teeth. So what we tried to do on her is we just tried to mimic her original smile. And you can see there's the final. If you compare that to the before, it's very, that's it's, very it's nice. identical, okay? And that's, you know, that's the beauty of what we do. And, and, and how soon could they eat? Like you say, I mean, they could, after the final procedure, they could eat soft foods and then they could eat whatever they want. Yeah, you're, obviously you're a little sore, but you want, you're going to, you're going to, that same day, you're going to have a new set of teeth nice. that you're going to be able to eat with Good. the same day. And the beauty of what we do, uh, because I do IV sedation, uh, you take a little nap. And the medicine that we use is strong amnesia, so there's no better way of doing dentistry than not being able to remember it, is, is <laughs> yeah. what I like to tell people. So that really makes a lot of sense. So, Buster, uh, here's, here's a typical patient. Didn't understand what was out there. Denture patient for many, many so years. So those are dentures those he's are wearing dentures. now. And they were worn down to nothing. There was nothing, literally, he had worn through the teeth into the acrylic. Um, and wanted something that was fixed in place wanted teeth that, that felt real and he could eat and chew again, uh, that's what he's got. Uh, and again, look at the difference in his face. Look, wow. Yes. So those teeth don't come out? They do not come out. They're not going anywhere. Here's one of my favorite cases. Um, Olivia, okay? We look at it before. Um, very, again, very typical. Wow. Okay, and, and so how many of these have you seen uh, today that, that, you know, here's their mouth. They think they're unique. They think that they're, you know, some horrible Like the case. only ones right. with this problem. And the reality is we see it day in it's and day all over. out. Okay. It's all, all over the place. place. You can literally feel cowboy. So she's a person them. also that would have had a denture. Would have been a denture, was unrestorable the way she was, completely overclosed, completely broken, teeth were ground so down. So on the consult, when you see this, do you think, boy, this is gonna be good? What I think is, boy, this is, you're gonna to have to make a hard decision. And sometimes they, you know, it, it's not the simplest decision in the world to say, we're gonna lose your teeth. But I think the more we talk about it, uh, and we make that decision together, I, I don't tell them, you're gonna to need to lose your teeth. I'm, I, I explain to them why. And so when we get to that point where, okay, does it make sense that, that maybe the best solution begins with removing your teeth? They're always... And getting new teeth again. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. And that's important. I think that's important in the, in the grand scheme yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Look at the difference it makes in her face. Doesn't look like the same person. And when they look at... Now, when they come back, you say some of these patients want to hug you. Oh, yes. It's like they're compelled to hug you. Oh, yes. Best part of our job. <laughs> Is that right? Best part of our job. When we can make that kind of an impact in someone's life and they... We see their their joy. We see their uh, their personality coming out. That's what that's what gives us. Now, now we should mention. Look, Medicare doesn't cover this. Even the best dental insurance only covers a very small portion. Some people are financing this. Is okay. that right? That's right. Okay. There's there's very few people that can come in and just write a check for this type of procedure. We're out of time. But if somebody goes to you in your practice and they either you can't save their teeth, full mouth of extractions, or they're already wearing a denture. What are their options when it comes to dental implants in your practice? In my practice, we offer three basic options. Okay. Uh, a snap in, snap out, okay, which means uh, they have to take them in and out. There's a little bit more maintenance, gotta keep them clean. Um, but they can eat with those. They, oh, sure, sure they can. I mean, you do a lot of those too, right? The we snap do, in, we snap do a out. lot of them, we, okay. do, we do a lot of them. Um, or upper and lower teeth that don't come in and out are fixed in place, and the best part is Unlike a denture where these people can really taste their food. You know, a lot of your, uh, your taste buds are on your palate. 
your soft palate. So when you've got plastic covering it, you can't taste food quite the same. Is that right? And you, okay. can't, you can't chew anywhere near as well with a denture as you can with teeth like this. Um, when, you, when you get teeth that are fixed in place, you're able to eat foods you're, that otherwise not be able to. You can't have salad, okay? You're gonna be able to corn on the cob, ribs, um, things that you need to be able to crush um, your doctor might be telling you, you know, you need more fiber. And if you've got a denture, you're thinking, good luck, doc. I, and I hate <laughs> Metamucil. You know, I'm not yeah, going to have yeah. this. Well, the reality is if you can properly eat and chew your food, you're going to be in so much better shape. And okay. so those are our options. We have, we have snap in, snap out, regular, or something that is fixed in place. Okay, good. Well, you know, we are out of time. Final message. Somebody watching this, maybe they've heard your message. They fit into the, one of the two main categories. Teeth that are really bad, can't save them or the denture wears, but for whatever reason, they're still afraid. You know, maybe they think, I don't know, going to the dentist is a hassle. What do you say to them? I'll say this. Um, I'm doing seminars in the community. I'm do probably doing a seminar in your community. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can just answer questions in a very okay. non-confrontational environment. You can come in and ask me whatever you want. I'll show you some, some cases, I'll show you what we do, but what I, what I want you to be able to do is just ask me questions that, that you've got maybe pressing. How, how do we take care of this? How, how can we afford this? Um, what, what's it like for someone like me? Um, and so these public seminars you do, is it like every other month? Once, once a month and we rotate. Oh, so they could go to the website and look at the date of your yes. next meeting. Our website is well, thompsonsmiles.com. It'll tell you the date and the time of, of where we're going to be. So is this true? People are, I mean, are driving like from another state or from great distances to see you to do this? It, it is. It is. We are, we're very humbled by this. Uh, it, fortunately, I only live 13 miles from Texas, so it's no big deal <laughs> okay. if they're driving from Texas. However, the typical new patient of ours drives over 100 miles. Is that right? It is. And so I, I, mean, I really appreciate that dedication and that time that they're taking to come and see us. And so I try to do as much as I possibly can in every visit. And I try to let them, when they leave, have all the information that they can possibly need so that they can go home and they can make a decision. Um, or if they have a lot of work that needs to be done, we're going to get it done. Um, How long have you been doing implant dentistry? 17 years. 17 years. 17 years. I started right out of dental school. One of the first things that I did uh, was I took some implant courses. And I wasn't doing a lot of them back then, but I, I took them and I was placing them. I didn't have the confidence. And it wasn't until five or six years after dental school that I really poured myself into it. Uh, took some really more advanced type courses, understood bone grafting, understood how to maintain the tissue. Uh, and that's, that's skills that are, that are critically important to make sure that these are long lasting, uh, life changing restorations. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good stuff. Thanks, Randy. So if somebody wants to come in, free consultation, did they get to see you? They get to see me. All right, good. I want to thanks. Thanks again for coming on the program. You bet. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.